It was nearly midnight on New Year's Eve around 11.15pm, and I was at home alone. For some background, I had just moved to this city for work, far from my family. Right before Christmas, I got hit with Covid-19, so I was in a 10-day quarantine. My symptoms were mild, but still, I was stuck at home for Christmas and the New Year. I live in a pretty new neighbourhood that is mostly quiet, even during the day. The typical noise around is usually from construction workers as the area is still under development. That night I was just settling in to watch the New Year's special when I started hearing a faint noise from outside. It sounded like some faint growling. I can't really describe it, but it was faint and deliberate. I peered through the windows but didn't notice anything unusual. Just the winds blowing through the trees and rattling their leaves. I quickly brushed it off and went back to the TV, but the sound continued. And at this point, I couldn't take it anymore. I am a big guy, over six feet tall, used to play football in college. I'm not easily scared and trust me, I am not the kind to say I believe in ghosts or paranormal. So, I went to the front door, looked through the peephole but saw no one. I opened the door a bit for a better look, still nothing. But the growling continued. At this point I thought it might be my neighbour's dog, so I stepped on the porch to find out. The neighbour's house was all dark. Frankly, it seemed like they were away for the holidays. And their dog was always friendly. Just as I was about to head back inside, I saw this dark figure shifting to the other side of my car. From my angle, I couldn't really tell what it was. But its shadow was clearly visible thanks to the porch light. Looking back, I should have stepped back inside and called the police. When the figure came closer, now just a few yards away. I realised it wasn't a dog. It was a very tall, skinny woman with messy hair, standing weirdly, I mean like a zombie. Her pose was really weird. Her clothes were pretty odd, plus she was barefoot, which was odd. Initially I thought it was a homeless woman, but then I quickly dropped that thought. See, my neighbourhood was gated, and besides it's rare to see homeless people around this part of the suburbs. She stepped closer and spoke in a deep, growling voice. I know you're in there. You can't hide from me, I can hear you. At that instance, I felt a rush of adrenaline. Either this woman is crazy or on some drugs, but I am not ready to confront her. I ran back inside and locked the door. I shouted from the window that I would call the police if she did not leave my property. Then, I heard a loud bang on my door, like an attempt to get inside. I tried to call 911 but the calls kept dropping. At the time I had an iPhone 7 and ever since I updated to the latest iOS my call reception has been terrible. One instance I will have four bars, then the next I am down to two or one bar. Finally I managed to use the emergency SOS feature to connect to 911. I told the operator everything. She instructed me to stay put and remain inside for about 15 minutes and the cops would be on the way. At that point I continued to peer through the blinds, but she was nowhere in sight and the growling had stopped. When the clock struck midnight and the fireworks started, I saw her climbing down the stairs and back on my driveway. It seemed like she was on my porch all this while, and probably got startled by the fireworks. This was when I lost sight of her and didn't know where she went after. Thankfully the police arrived within few minutes but had to keep their distance because of my quarantine. They asked me what happened. I told them everything, but from their expression, it seemed like they had a hard time believing my story. They did search around my property and that of the neighbouring properties, but they didn't find anything unusual. They took down a report and promised to maintain a watch in the neighbourhood that night. I must admit, I didn't sleep that night. I stayed up watching Netflix holiday playlists. What brought me some comfort was seeing the police patrol the neighbourhood occasionally. They kept it up for a week or so. Eventually, I told my girlfriend, who is huge into conspiracy theories, she was convinced that what I saw was a skinwalker. These entities are capable of adopting any animal and also mimicking humans. Over time, I did some research, and my experience was similar to what several people were sharing on the internet. It has been two years now. The police report didn't lead to anything and I never saw that thing again. Now every New Year's Eve I make sure I'm not alone at home, just can't shake off that feeling, you know?
And whenever I share this story, people give me that look, like they think I am crazy. I've always seen myself as a tough guy, growing up in a military family and all. I was never the type to get scared easily. But what happened that day really did shake me up. So, it all started at my old job. I used to be a pizza delivery guy for the evening shift. It wasn't anything high paying, but it helped supplement my income from my day job. You know, during the holiday season, we usually get swamped with orders, and that day was no exception. It was New Year's Eve, and as usual, I was working the evening shift around 3pm to 11.30pm. During this time of year, people often give generous tips. On that evening, I had a delivery to an apartment complex. I buzzed the apartment number and the door clicked open so I entered. Usually I would wait in the lobby for customers to come down. But that night, I was in a hurry. I thought maybe going the extra mile by delivering directly to their door might earn me some good tip. When I knocked, a big odd-looking man opened the door. His place was a total mess, but I didn't think about it much at the time. He caught me off guard when he asked me to step inside while he looked for some change. I declined, insisting that I was fine waiting outside. I handed him the pizza, then he spoke in this really thin voice. Hey buddy, how about a slice? It's New Year, we could share this pizza, you know. But I politely declined thanking him that I was okay and should be heading back to my orders. At this point I was getting bad vibes, a creepy one of course, so I decided to forget the tip and just leave. I politely told him I was okay with the tip and should be heading back. He seemed upset, but eventually let go of the door. As I was heading back to my bike I thought, man, that guy's nuts. Felt a bit bad for judging him, but I just wanted to get out of there. Right when I was about to ride off, I heard him running up yelling, Hey buddy, you forgot your tip. Hold on. Looking back, I should have just sped away, but I waited for him to catch up, thinking he was going to give me a generous tip. And that's the last thing I remember. When I opened my eyes, it felt like I had been taking this really long nap, but I quickly realised that I was in a hospital bed. My mum and my manager were standing next to me. My mum's face showed a mix of relief and joy when she saw me awake, but I was too weak to talk or move much at that moment. My shoulder was hurting a lot, my right arm was covered in bandages, and I had a few bruises on my leg. Honestly, I couldn't remember much from that night. Turned out the guy had bipolar disorder and wasn't on his meds. A tenant had seen a struggle go on between him and me in the parking lot. She thought it was a robbery. So, she screamed, and people came running, he tried to run but didn't get far. By the time the cops and ambulance got there, I was unconscious. They called my boss, then my mum. My boss did tell me that I could return to work once I was completely healed, but for me that was the last time I ever worked delivering pizzas, or any job involving deliveries for that matter. I felt like something in me was broken that day. For many years afterward, I found myself becoming paranoid about even the little things. The thought of what might have happened if that lady hadn't stepped in makes my skin crawl. This story happened to me about three years ago. To give you some context, I am a 31-year-old woman, standing at 5'6 with a petite frame. Back then, I was living in Western Canada. We were expecting an extra 5 centimetres of snow that evening with temperatures dropping below minus 25 degrees as midnight approached. After returning from work that day, I found myself alone at home and feeling somewhat bored. I was thinking about the food I was going to defrost and the TV show I was going to watch. Quite a way to spend New Year's, right? Besides, with this kind of weather, it's not like there were many options to go out or make plans. Anyways, just as I was about to defrost my dinner, I realised I was out of ketchup. There's a convenience store about a five minute drive from my house so I decided to run a quick errand. When I returned, I parked in the garage instead of the driveway so I could plug in my car for the cold night. After I exited the garage I felt that something didn't feel right. There were fresh footprints in the snow on my lawn, stopping a few metres from my door. Also there were some holiday flyers on my porch I hadn't noticed earlier. 
I looked around but didn't see anything unusual. It was pretty cold, and I didn't feel like I had the energy to investigate, so I grabbed the flyers and went inside. Not sure if I locked the door. I got distracted, checking out the holiday deals on those flyers. After finishing supper, I settled on the couch to watch Family Guy, waiting for the midnight fireworks. I wanted something light and funny to keep me awake. Living close to downtown, I had a good view of the fireworks from my bedroom, which was always a win-win for living in that part of the city. It was around 11pm when I heard a strange sound from outside. It felt like footsteps crunching on snow. I peered through the windows but didn't see anything, just a few cars passed by. At this point I thought maybe I was just imagining things because I have had a long day. I decided it was time for bed, telling myself it was all in my head. Usually I'd fall asleep on the couch, but with the fireworks I chose to go to my bedroom instead. My house is a single detached property with two bedrooms upstairs. Just before I swung the bedroom door open, I heard the front door creak open. Peeking out, I saw three figures enter the hallway. I couldn't see their faces clearly because I had dimmed the lights earlier, and besides that they were wearing those regular face masks. That was when it hit me that I had not locked my door earlier, and to make matters even worse, I had left my phone on the couch. These were criminals, and probably thought I was not home. I knew that shouting for help seemed too risky. The streets were quiet, and my neighbours were probably asleep. My mind was racing for the safest move, and I decided to hide in my bedroom closet. At the time, I had a golf club hiding in the closet and thought that would be my last point of defence. Two of the guys climbed upstairs into the master bedroom that I was hiding. I heard them talking about money, something about the bank. I realised they were after the cash I withdrew recently for my house sale. I was moving to a different city and had part of the money at home. That was a bad move. I know. How did they know about it? I have no idea. Just then, my phone alarm started going off loudly. I had set it for 11.55pm in case I fell asleep before the fireworks. The loud noise seemed to scare them because I quickly heard footsteps running down the hallway. I took this opportunity to scream out the window as loud as I could, which caused my neighbour's two dogs to start barking. I was still unsure if any of the intruders were still hiding in the house, so I quickly ran out into the cold winter night, panicked to my neighbour's house and urgently asked them to call the police. The police arrived shortly after that. They searched my house thoroughly but didn't see anyone. The officers assured me they would do everything they could to identify those intruders. I have since moved to be closer to my family on the east coast. Regarding those guys, the police managed to identify them after conducting a few interrogations. It turned out they were members of a local gang. However, I still have no idea how they came to know about the money in my house. Regardless, I'm grateful they didn't find anything valuable in the house, and most importantly I didn't get injured. But, this still gives me traumatic stress whenever I think about it. <laughs>